This is Dr. Holt. In this problem, I have a projectile mass M has a mass of 0.774 kilograms. So this is his mass here. It's traveling with an initial velocity of 27.8 meters per second. The projectile is going to strike this stationary rod here that has a mass of 9.06 kilograms. Now the thing about this problem is it is actually pivoted. It's pivoted about this point here and the pivot point cannot change. Now the length of this rod is going to be 2.41. I'll do that with a vector, not with a vector, with a little rod, with a, excuse me, line. So this length from here to here is going to be 2.41. And that's going to be meters. And that's the dimension from there to there. All right. After it sticks, and I'm going to grab some of this and we'll bring it over in on the other side. Let's see if I can make this look right. Um, this piece is going to, we'll just let, make it look like it's going to stick on there. Move it in. It's going to stick right on the end like this. All right, so right at impact, it's going to have, still have that velocity right at impact. And I'll move this over to here. And what we want to find is right when it impacts, what is this new angular velocity going to be, omega? All right, so we're going to work the problem. To work the problem first is you want to find out what is the initial angular momentum. Now, there's two equations we can use for this. We can know linear momentum can be the cross product of the R cross product with momentum, P, which is basically equal to R cross product of mass times velocity. We can use that. And the other one, if it's, a, if it's just an object that's rotating, then we can use I times our angular velocity. Now in this case, initially, we're just going to be using this here, and we'll find out what the initial angular momentum is going to be. Now my R distance here, I'm taking from here, is going to be R is going to equal to 2.41 divided by 2. That's going to give us this value right there. And I can do that in my head, but I'll just do it in my calculator to make sure I do not make a mistake. And that's going to give me 1.205. So my R value is going to be 1.205 meters. All right. Well, then my uh, MV value is just going to be this. It's going to be the mass, which is going to be 0.774 times its velocity of 27.8. I'll run that number, 0.774 times 27.8. That gives me a value of 21.5172. So I'm going to write that all the way out. Okay, so then we can say that the initial angular momentum at impact is going to be the 21.5172 times 1.205 and that's going to give me a value of 25.9282 okay so that's going to be our initial angular momentum Okay, and the units on that would be in kilograms times meters squared over seconds. All right. So that would be our initial angle, angular momentum. Now we know by the conservation of angular momentum, a torque is not being applied, and then Li will equal to L final. So we know our final angular momentum will also equal the same value, 25.9282. 
All right. Now we can go back, and if we want to find out what this value is, we know that this, that angular, mom angular momentum is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. So we'll go ahead and set that up. We'll take 25.9282. We'll set that equal up to, excuse me, set it equal to I times angular velocity. The I value of the rod about its center will be using the equation 1 12th times the mass times d squared or length squared. So that's going to give me 1 12th. We go back and look and the mass is 9.06. Okay, and the length of this is 2.41. Okay, so that would be the total moment of inertia of just the rod. And now that object that's stuck down at the end, we need to go back and calculate the moment of inertia of it. And we'll calculate the moment of that. Let's see, what do you call that? Projectile? Yeah, projectile. And we'll treat that as just a point mass. And that's going to be using the equation m times d squared or equals to m times r squared, meaning the distance from the center. So the mass of that <coughs> projectile is going to be 0 0.774 times the distance, and that's the distance, what we say, the r value uh, right here, 1.205. And make sure here I forgot to square that because that's square too. All right, so we need to add those two values together. So I'm going to run and calculate the first one. So I got 1 divided by 12 times 9.06 times 2.41 squared. This one gives, the upper one gives me a value of 4.385, and that would be in kilograms times meters squared. The second one, we take 0.774 times 1.205 squared, and that gives me a value of 1.1239 kilograms times meters squared. Okay, I'm going to add those two values together. That gives me a total moment of inertia of 5.5090 kilograms times meters squared. All right, we're just about done with this first part. Now to calculate what this value is going to be, we take 25.9282 is equal to the moment inertia 5.5090 times our angular velocity. And our angular velocity comes to 4.7065 radians per second. So that wasn't too bad. Now, let's see what else we can find out. Um, let's find out, um, let's see here, let's do kinetic energy. Let's find out what our kinetic energy is going to be. All right. <clears throat> Our initial kinetic energy on this system, I only have to consider the mass and the velocity, so that we're using one half <coughs> mv squared. Now when we do our final kinetic energy, all we have is rotation. So to do that, I'm going to take one half times i times omega squared. All right, so we'll run it. In the first part, our initial kinetic energy is going to equal to one half, and the only thing it's moving was the mass, and that's the 0.774. And our velocity we're traveling was 27.8. We'll square that. That'll tell us our initial kinetic energy. 
So take 0.5 times 0.774 times 27.8 squared. That gives us a value of 299.089 joules. Okay, we'll do our final kinetic energy. We come back here, we do one half. We use the moment inertia that we got up here. Oops, it's 5.5, sorry. Times our angular velocity, which is going to be 4.7065. We will square that value right there. All right, run that one through real quick. So 0.5 times 5.5090 times 4.7065 squared. And that gives me a value of 61.02 joules. Okay, so if I wanted to find out the percentage um, that I've lost, I will take 61.02 minus the 299.089. We will divide it by the initial 299.089. And then we'll take all that, we'll multiply that by 100 to get our percentage change. Let's see what we get there. So minus. 299.089 divided by 299.089 and I got approximately 79.6 percent. So I've lost 79.6 percent of my kinetic energy from that impact and remember that was an inelastic impact. Okay. So this example of how to uh, set up a problem like this. Um, I'm going to work future problems where this object's not pinned. If it's not pinned, then the center mass, it will shift as a result of this extra mass being attached. So I'll try those on future videos. Anyway, I hope this helped you guys.